This is it, the long-awaited custom camper van tour. This is TJ and we have been tent camping in all 50 states, but we just recently upgraded to our brand new custom camper van. And this isn't any old custom camper van. We actually designed this van and then hired a company out of Springfield, Missouri called Ozark Mountain Adventure Vans to build it. And today, we're giving you the tour. To start things off, I'm gonna show you the outside of the van. So let's talk about the chassis. This is a Ford Transit T350 HD EcoBoost all-wheel drive. We also have two tires in the back on each side, an outer and an inner. It's called a dually. We have the tallest and the longest van that Ford makes. Let's start here in the back. We're starting with this bumper. It's made by Backwoods Adventure Mods. Shout out to Backwoods for being amazing. But it holds our spare tire. Our accessories are in this dry box here. It's waterproof. We keep all of our propane and gas and stuff in there. Uh, for like our stove and all that stuff and then it's got a bike rack on top and then it's super easy if we want to access the inside we just lift this handle it swings out like that this whole piece swings out and these have these hydraulic arms on them so that it like is super easy to push in and push out it's not very heavy and now we can enjoy the inside Moving around to the driver's side, we have this little 30 amp plug so we can plug in in an RV park. We also have this super sturdy ladder on the side of the van that goes up to our deck. Before we go up there, I wanna show you one of the coolest things about our van. One of the questions we get asked all the time is, does our van have a toilet? It does, and it's super easy to empty. This little latch opens, got our cleaning kit, and then all you have to do is pull our tank out. So this is our cassette toilet, it holds all of our pee. It's super easy to empty. You just go to a dump station and unscrew this cap and dump it into the tank, or you can roll it. It's on wheels like a luggage. You can roll it to like a toilet or something and dump it in a toilet. And when you're done, you just pop it back in the hatch. And it just pops in there, close the little hatch, and you're done. You can also lock it. It has locks if you want. Although I'm really not sure who would want to steal human waste. That would be disgusting. Next, let's talk about our gray water tank. When we say gray water, that just means water that comes through our sink or our shower. It's located in a tank underneath here, and this is the valve. You just undo that, and there's a little lever. When you pull the lever, water comes out. It's empty right now though. Next to the gray tank is our fresh water input valve. We just hook a water hose up to this with city water or fresh water, fill up our tanks, or we can stay connected and not have to use our tanks. Now for a roof tour. All right, so here we are on the roof. We have our air conditioner. It's made by Dometic. Air conditions are inside the camper. And then we have all sorts of storage room on top, which we can keep our tent camping stuff in. And then on the back, you can see we have two solar panels and a max air fan to suck all the heat out of our van. One of the coolest parts of our van are all the lights on it. We have this light, this light, these lights, these lights, these lights, and these lights. And finally, these lights. That way we can see in the dark all the way around our van 360 degrees whenever we want. Now on the front we also have a backwoods bumper which why would you not because it looks so cool. One of the biggest compliments we get all the time is on our bumpers and they're made right here in Arkansas. It includes a light on the front LED. We also have these tow points and it has a winch inside. And we've already had to use the winch once. Whoa 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 stop it's gonna roll. TJ's getting the winch rolled up. Oh no, oh my gosh, it's like Okay. Yes. 
my underwear is soaked. I am soaked from head to toe. I'm so glad that we're out of that situation. Like without the winch, the whole van just would have turned over. And there's like a pond. Like it would have just gone underwater. We would have just like sunk down. And like it was, it just happened really fast. Ozark Mountain, thanks for the winch. You literally saved the van. We also have these sick KO2 tires and these method wheels to complete the whole look of the van. On either side of the van, we have these heavy duty Nerf bars, which come in handy because we don't have to worry about high centering when we're off-roading. I also think this is a good time to say that our Nerf bars, our roof rack, and our ladder were all custom made by Ozark Mountain. And our van was one of the first in the world to have the new method wheels. And this little compartment here is our outdoor shower, which is always ready whenever you need it. One of the reasons that we could use the outdoor shower is like if you could wash your feet off before you get in the van, if you've been hiking or mudding, or you can wash dishes out here, or if you have one of those things that like go around you, you can take a shower outside, or if you're just in the middle of nowhere and you wanna be in nature. Speaking of first in the world, these guys right here are made by Flare Space. They're called Flares, and they give us about six extra inches on either side so we can sleep sideways. Welcome to the front seat of our van. Of course, this is where we drive and ride, which is super awesome that we have like 5 million cup holders up here and everything's just open and really neat. I've never had that in a car and I like it, but the best part is that these front seats turn around and open up into the van. It turns sideways and then you use the bar that adjusts like how close it is to the dash to turn it around, just like this. Okay, we'll start here at the front of the van and work our way backwards. So, right when you walk in, you're in our little dining room area. This is our first table. We'll show you the other one in the back in a minute, but it was really important to us that this was very practical for living since we are going to be in it full time. And part of that meant that we had two seating areas. So like I said and showed you, these seats turn around and the driver's seat turns right around to this front table. And the bench across from me, we also have two seat belts. So either of us could sit in the back and work while the other person drives if we need to, um, or we could have guests. One of my favorite things about this table is that it moves. So if you need it to be closer or further away from you, whether you're sitting in this seat or the bench, you have that option. In addition to that, there's also storage underneath that bench. Let me show you. So the top cushion comes off and then the bottom cushion lifts up and this is where we keep our shoes mostly. We have a couple other random things in there too, but that's our shoe storage. And at this table, we have two USB ports and underneath it, there's a regular outlet. Okay, before we move any further back, let me show you two more things here at the front. The first is this shelf that goes above the front seats. We keep our towels up here and our washcloths, and then we have some other random stuff like our neck pillow, and then we have a broom and dustpan, like a hand broom and a hand vacuum for cleaning this place. The second is this S-Pod right here, which is where we can control the outside lights that TJ showed you. There's different buttons for the front, back, side, that sort of thing. Also up here at the front, we have our control panel. So this one right here controls the Dometic air conditioner. This one right here is where we control the heat when we need it, and then the hot water heater and that sort of thing. It says it's 101 degrees in here, and it sort of feels like that today. We are sweating like dogs, it's crazy. One of the reasons it's so hot in here is because we're not running the air conditioner because it's too loud for the video, not because we can't run it when we're off grid. We can and actually lasts quite a while on our battery system. Next to this, we have the switch for the water pump, and the tank heater and then we can also see our tanks like how full they are for example hit fresh we are completely full next to that we have the switch for the lights and they're on a dimmer which is what this one controls one of the cool things about our van is that we have a tankless hot water heater so when you flip that switch it just heats the water and you're good to go now for the kitchen our kitchen has really neat features that we designed specifically for us we just took ideas from a bunch of other things we saw and put them all together so we'll start on the very end we have this countertop extension which is very very nice and one of the neat things about it is that if you pull this handle 
it can be lowered if it needs to. Next is our sink. We have a swivel faucet, so we can extend it out here, we can put it outside if we needed to, but the top of the sink is also a cutting board. Take that off and we have just a regular sink. Put it back on, we have extra counter space, and then we have a two burner induction stove, which of course, when you're not using it, is also more counter space. And on this end, we just keep our chargers here most of the time, and our Google Home. Above this area, we have storage. Up here doesn't look very big, but it actually holds a whole lot, as you can see. We have any medicines we might need, we have some cups, um, seasonings, coffee pot, plates, kitchen towels, all the sorts of good stuff. And on the opposite side, we have storage. This is where we keep our batteries, flashlights, headlamps. We made these signs so that we don't pull out of a campground while we're still plugged in. And we also have a first aid kit up there. Underneath our kitchen counter and stove, we have storage in this place under the sink which is next to the fridge, which is a pretty good size, and we have a freezer in there. And then on the other side of it, we have three drawers. The top one is just kind of like our junk drawer. Everybody has one of those, has miscellaneous necessities. And then we have some other kitchen gadgets and a trash can. Up here, we have our microwave, which also doubles as storage when we're not using it. And then next to that, we have the pantry, which pulls out. We have, obviously, anything you would keep in a pantry here. And then below the pantry is another closet that keeps most of TJ stuff. Across from the kitchen, we have the bathroom. And our bathroom is really neat in the fact that it actually seals off with this door. A lot of camper vans just have a curtain or nothing, but we have that door, which I really like. We have a toilet, as TJ showed you on the outside. It is a cassette toilet. You can use it in there and shut the door, or if you need more legroom, you can turn it and sit out this way. The pros of having a cassette toilet is that there's a little blade down here where you can open and close the access to the, the actual cassette, which means that it doesn't ever stink in here if we use it right. We also have a full shower, and we have this rack, which we get to hang clothes on. You can pull it in whenever you need to by loosening this, or you can pull it back out and make yourself a clothes rack. It's pretty simple, and I know it's really small, but it works very, very well. I should probably explain why we have this in the bathroom. This is our laundry bag, which we just take out when we take a shower, but that's the best place to keep it, to keep it out of the way. We also have this ladder, which you might have seen in the bathroom earlier, and this is what we use to get on and off the bed because it's a little bit too tall to jump. And we have one more closet before we get to the back. This one, the whole door opens, and we have access to several shelves. This is my closet here at the top. This one actually pulls out, which is very nice. And then we have a safe in here, which holds all of our camera gear and electronics in a way that we can plug them in so we can charge them while they're in there. That part is great. We have another drawer for other clothes of mine down here, and then miscellaneous things in the storage on the bottom. One of my favorite things about this closet, we didn't do this by design, but I would recommend it for anybody wondering, is that when it opens, it kind of creates like a sound barrier between the front and the back. So I've been working back there at that table before and TJ's been up at this table, and with the door open, we can't hear each other very well and it makes very good setup for remote work. Now, let's head to the back of the van. All right, back here in the back, we have another table. This one's a bit longer, and this is where we really like to spend our time, um, like eating dinner or watching Netflix, that sort of thing. But this table actually folds down. Before I show you how this table folds into another bed, let me first show you a few features back here. First, we have touch lights. Makes it real simple to turn these on and off. And when the bed above us is dropped down, those are like right above our head, so it makes perfect reading light. And then we also have windows back here. We can easily open to allow airflow. And we also have more USB ports. Okay, so you kind of have to put all your weight into this va into this table to lower it down. It's kind of from a, from a funny angle, but 
once you get on it, whoa, you just. <laughs> Okay, TJ kind of had to help me. That's kind of hard. But then you put the backs of the bench cushions in the middle and you have another bed. Obviously, it's kind of hard to fit in here. It's a little bit short for an adult to sleep on here overnight, but it is quite comfy. And if you had to do it for a night or two, it really wouldn't be that bad. The bed we sleep on is actually on an electric lift, and this is the one that comes down and fits in those flares, which makes it longer and much more comfortable. The switch is up here, and you just wait for it to come down. We've also added some other things to this bed, like we added a mattress topper, and we have our pillows on top of it. So if you didn't have any of that, it could go closer to the ceiling, so you didn't have to duck to get under it. But we keep those things on top of it, when we move it up to get out of the way. And we also keep our window covers up here during the day when we don't need them. Okay, so to set the bed up, we just lower it down and then we have these extender blocks that we fit in the flares. Easier said than done sometimes. There we go, there's one. This side's typically harder than the other. I don't really know why, but to lift up the mattress a little, squeeze that in there. And you have to kind of like climb on top to make it. It doesn't take long, as you can see. Then we just put our pillows on one end and we have our blankets. It's really comfy and it's really nice. And I'm really glad this is our bed. Above the bed, we have a max air fan, which we simply open and then we can hit a switch on. And the great thing about this is that it can either suck air or blow air. And with the windows open in here, if it's a nice evening, we don't even need to run the air or heat when we go to bed. We just turn that on and the air cycles right through. On either side of the bed, we also have these little pouches to keep stuff in when we go to sleep, like phone chargers. And then we have outlets. There's two regular outlets and two USB plugs on each side. One of my favorite things we had installed was these giant bug nets because when the weather is really nice, we can open up the doors and just enjoy the cool breeze. We also have one on the front doors, but we keep that one rolled up most of the time since we go in and out of it more. But it also opens easily. It just snaps back with those magnets. But as you can see, we have our lawn chairs back here because there's some room between those benches and the doors. That is very valuable storage space. So we've been keeping our lawn chairs here and we also keep TJ's one wheel back here. This is also the way that we get access to what's under the benches. On this side we have electrical in case we need to deal with that. And on the other side we have our water tanks. That's a 21 gallon fresh water tank. Another detail is that we have electrical outlets on both sides right here so that if you're sitting at the bench and you're like working on your computer or whatever, you have the ability to plug in right here. When Ozark Mountain made this, they did a very, very good job at putting in all of the outlets in a lot of different places because they're always easily accessible and we have plenty of them. Okay, last but not least, we have two outdoor features that I absolutely love. And part of the idea behind living in a camper van is getting to spend more time outside. And people freak out because they're like, oh my gosh, it's such a tiny space to live in. And it is, but when you really think about how much other things you can do, it's pretty freeing. One of my favorite things is that we can cook meals or prepare meals out here whenever we want to. And part of the way we do that is with this outdoor counter. Putting down this counter also gives us access to this neat little door where we can reach under the kitchen sink and if we need to fix anything with the water setup we can, but we can also get any of the gadgets in there pretty easily. Last but not least, we have the awning switch. I absolutely love the awning because it makes this extra homey and it's just easy to put out and pull back in. All right, that wraps it up for our camper van tour video. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments below because I know we might have missed a few things here and there, but let us know what you think. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a lot and lets us stay on the road. And we love you guys. I will see you in the next video.